In the first lesson to this section of our STEM instructional program, we discussed the basic concept of aircraft motion and how an aircraft is able to move in three dimensions. In the second lesson, we introduced the basic flight control surfaces of an aircraft, rudders, elevators, and ailerons. In this lesson, we will introduce you to the more advanced flight surfaces that have been employed on aircraft. In the short history of manned flight, aircraft have been required to fly higher and faster and carry more of a load. These requirements have caused aircraft to get larger and heavier. As a result, the basic flight control surfaces common on most early airplanes were not able to provide effective control by themselves. To overcome these shortfalls, additional flight surfaces have been developed to assist the pilot in maintaining control of the aircraft. The first control surfaces that will be discussed in this lesson are actually part of the primary flight controls. They are referred to as trim tabs. Trim tabs are small control surfaces connected to the trailing edge of a larger control surface, such as a rudder, elevator, or aileron. Trim tabs are used to make minor changes to the main control surfaces that will reduce or eliminate the requirement to constantly apply a control force to maintain stable flight. Changing the setting of a trim tab adjusts the neutral or resting position of a control surface. As the neutral position of the control surface changes with changes for speed or altitude, an adjustable trim tab would allow the pilot to reduce the flight control force required to maintain that position. If set correctly, the force required to maintain heading or altitude would be reduced to zero. Under ideal conditions, the pilot would be able to release the controls and the aircraft would maintain constant course, altitude, or attitude. Elevator trim, for example, frees the pilot from exerting constant pressure on the pitch or nose-up, nose-down controls. Instead, the pilot adjusts a trim control wheel or lever to cancel out control forces for a given airspeed and weight distribution. For example, to trim an elevator to hold the nose down, the elevator's trim tab will actually rise up into the slipstream. The increased pressure on top of the trim tab surface caused by raising it will then deflect the entire elevator surface down slightly, causing the tail to the rise and the aircraft's nose to move down. Elevator or pitch trim can be used after takeoff to establish a constant climb, used to maintain a constant altitude during the cruise portion of flight, or to set a constant descent and approach to landing while reducing or eliminating the need for constant control pressure. Many airplanes also have rudder and or aileron trim systems. Propeller-driven aircraft have a tendency to yaw or turn to the left when operating at high power or in a climb. A rudder trim tab would be used to counter this natural yaw tendency by angling slightly to the left when viewed from behind the aircraft to lessen the need for a pilot to push the rudder pedal constantly to overcome the left turning tendencies of many propeller-driven aircraft. Single-engine propeller-driven aircraft are also impacted by the torque generated by the motion of the propeller. The equal and opposite torque due to the propeller would cause the aircraft to roll or tip to the left at high power settings or when the power settings are increased. As power settings are decreased, the trim would have to be adjusted to prevent roll to the right. This tendency could be reduced or eliminated by the use of an aileron trim tab. The takeoff and landing speeds of modern aircraft, as well as the distances required to take off and land, are limits that must be addressed. From the lesson on lift, you should remember that lift is due to the speed and change of direction 
of the wind both over and under a wing as well as the angle of attack of the wing. What was not discussed in that lesson is that there is a lower limit to the speed an aircraft must fly as well as an upper limit to the angle of attack necessary to maintain flight. If an airplane flies too slowly or the wing has too high an angle of attack, lift starts to decrease in a condition called stall. Stall in a fixed wing aircraft is the sudden reduction in lift as the wing's angle of attack exceeds its critical angle of attack for a specific airspeed. A stall does not mean that the engines have stopped working or that the aircraft has stopped moving. It simply means that the wings of an aircraft are no longer providing lift as effectively as they were at higher speeds or at a lower angle of attack. The critical angle of attack is the angle of attack on the lift versus angle of attack curve at which the maximum lift occurs. Stall is caused by a condition called flow separation or boundary layer separation. In simple terms, the airflow over the top of the wing has detached from the wing surface. Flow separation begins to occur at the rear edge of the wing at small angles of attack. As the angle of attack increases, the separated region on top of the wing increases in size and hinders the wing's ability to create lift. At the critical angle of attack, the area of separated flow is so large that any additional increases in the angle of attack produce less lift and more drag. At this point, the rapid loss of lift causes a loss of altitude as the weight of the aircraft now exceeds the lift generated. It also causes a loss of control of the aircraft as the rudder, elevators, and ailerons also function due to the movement of air over them. The wings of a modern passenger jet are designed to provide speed and efficiency during the cruise portion of flight, since that is where the aircraft spends the vast majority of its flight time. Because of these wing designs, takeoff and landing speeds for these aircraft would be much higher unless changes were made to reduce the speeds while not causing the wing to stall. That is the function of flight surfaces referred to as high lift devices. These high lift devices include flaps, slats, and slots. High lift devices compensate for modern wing design by adding lift at lower speeds. This added lift also reduces the distances required to safely take off or land the aircraft. As most of these high lift devices are retracted when not needed, they allow the use of the most efficient wing at cruise speeds and altitudes. The most common high lift device is the flap. Flaps are a type of high lift device used to increase the lift of an aircraft wing at a given airspeed. Flaps are usually mounted on the trailing edge of a fixed wing aircraft wing. When a flap is lowered, this reshapes the wing section to give it more camber or curvature, increasing the lift produced. It also increases the angle of attack in which the wing generates lift. This allows the aircraft to generate lift at lower speed and to lower the minimum speed in which an aircraft will safely maintain flight. The increase in camber also increases the wing drag, which can be beneficial during approach and landing because it slows the aircraft. In some aircraft configurations, a useful side effect of flap deployment is a decrease in aircraft pitch angle, which lowers the nose, thereby improving the pilot's view of the runway over the nose of the aircraft during landing. Depending on the aircraft type, flaps may be partially extended for takeoff. When used during takeoff, flaps trade runway distance for climb rate. In other words, using flaps decreases takeoff distance, but also reduces the rate at which an aircraft can climb. The amount of flap used on takeoffs is specific to each type of aircraft. As flaps cause an increase in drag, 
They are attracted when not needed. There are many different types of flaps used with a specific choice depending on the size, speed, and complexity of the aircraft on which they are to be used, as well as the era in which the aircraft was designed. Plain flaps, split flaps, slotted flaps, and fowler flaps are the most common. The simplest flap is the plain flap. Connected to the rear or trailing edge of the wing, the plain flap rotates downward on a simple hinge mounted at the front of the flap. Due to the greater efficiency of other flap types, the plain flap is normally used where simplicity is required. These simple hinged flaps came into common use in the 1930s, along with the arrival of the modern fast monoplane, which had higher landing and takeoff speeds than the old biplanes. In the split flap, the lower surface hinges downward while the upper surface remains either fixed to the wing or moves independently. Split flaps produce slightly more lift than plane flaps. At full deflection, the split flap acts much like a spoiler, adding significantly to drag. Any flap that allows air to pass between the wing and the flap is considered a slotted flap. The gap between the flap and the wing forces high pressure air from below the wing to flow over the top of the flap. This helps the airflow remain attached to the flap and increases lift compared to a split flap. Slotted flaps are the most commonly used flaps today and can be found on both small and large aircraft. A fowler flap is a slotted flap that slides backwards before hinging downward. Fowler flaps increase the area of the wing by extending rearward on rails or tracks. This extension increases wing cord or the overall size of the wing while increasing camber when lowered. Fowler flaps have either one or a series of slots to add energy to the airflow which increases lift and drag. A key feature of the fowler flap is that it must slide rearward before lowering. The fowler flap is still in widespread use on modern aircraft. Another common high lift device is called either a slot or a slat. The slot or slat is a small airfoil shaped device attached just in front of the wing leading edge. They redirect the airflow at the front of the wing, allowing it to flow more smoothly over the upper surface when the aircraft is at a high angle of attack. This allows the wing to be operated effectively at the higher angles required to produce more lift. A leading edge slot is a fixed or non-closing gap behind the wing's leading edge. High pressure air from below the wing can accelerate through the slot toward the low pressure region above the wing and exit from the slot moving parallel to the upper wing surface. This high speed flow then mixes with the boundary layer attached to the upper surface and delays flow separation from the upper surface and reduces stall speeds. At low angles of attack, the air flow through the slot is insignificant. At progressively higher angles of attack, the flow of air through the slot becomes increasingly significant, accelerating from the higher pressure region below the wing to the lower pressure region on top of the wing. Slots also contribute to drag compared to a wing not equipped with a slot. The extra drag at low speed is beneficial because it reduces stall speeds and improves aircraft control. For this reason, slots are typically found on low speed aircraft such as float planes. At higher speed, the extra drag contributed by the slot reduces cruising speed and increases fuel usage. One way to reduce the cruise drag caused by slots is to make them able to be closed. These movable slots are typically referred to as leading edge slats. Aerodynamically, slats work in the same way as fixed slots, but slats can be sequentially extended with the trailing edge flaps 
and retract it at higher speeds when they are not needed. Slats are, however, heavier and more complex than slots, so are most often found on larger aircraft. Most modern airliners use slats to generate high lift at low speeds. In addition to the high lift devices, additional control surfaces are found on many aircraft that work to reduce lift or to control airspeed by slowing the aircraft. Some of these devices are called spoilers, air brakes, decelerons, or dive brakes. In aeronautics, a spoiler, sometimes called a lift spoiler or lift dumper, is a device intended to intentionally reduce the lift of a wing in a controlled way. Most often, spoilers are plates on the top surface of a wing that can be extended upward into the airflow to spoil it. By doing so, the spoiler creates a controlled stall over the portion of a wing behind it, greatly reducing the lift of that wing section. Air brakes or speed brakes are a type of flight control surface used on an aircraft to increase drag or increase the angle of approach during landing. Air brakes differ from spoilers and that air brakes are designed to increase drag without decreasing lift, where spoilers are used to reduce lift and drag. Almost all jet-powered aircraft have an air brake system, or, in the case of most airliners, lift spoilers that also act as air brakes. The deceleron is a two-part aileron that functions normally in flight, but can split in half such as the top half goes up and the bottom half goes down. They can be deflected as a unit to provide roll control like an aileron or split open to act as an air brake. The space shuttle used a similar system. The vertically split rudder opened in clamshell fashion on landing to act as a speed brake. Dive brakes or dive flaps are deployed to slow down an aircraft when in a dive. They often consist of a metal flap or flaps that are extended into the airstream, thus creating drag and reducing dive speed. In the past, dive brakes were mostly used on dive bombers, which needed to dive very steeply, but without exceeding their top or red line speed in order to drop their bombs accurately. Most modern combat aircraft are equipped with air brakes, which perform the same function as dive brakes. Some devices are specifically designed to assist an aircraft in slowing after touchdown and during landing roll. A landing roll consists of touchdown, bringing the aircraft to taxi speed, and eventually to a complete stop. Most commercial jet engines, however, continue to produce thrust in the forward direction, even when idling. Unless changes to the engine can be made, engine thrust cannot be used to decelerate the aircraft. The brakes built into the landing gear of most modern aircraft can, under normal circumstances, stop the aircraft by themselves. For safety purposes and to reduce the stress on the brakes, another deceleration method is needed. In situations involving bad weather, where factors such as snow, rain, or ice on the runway reduce the effectiveness of the brakes, there is a higher need for an additional braking system. A number of devices have been developed and used to assist the brakes of a landing gear to slow or decelerate an aircraft from landing speed to taxi speed. Among these devices are drogue parachutes, thrust reversers, and lift dumpers. One of the first attempts to assist the aircraft braking system was the use of drogue parachutes. In general terms, the drogue parachute is a parachute designed to be deployed from a rapidly moving object in order to slow the object, to provide control and stability, or as a pilot parachute to deploy a larger parachute. When used to shorten an aircraft's landing, a drogue chute is often called a drag parachute or braking parachute. 
A drogue parachute is more elongated and has a far smaller area than a conventional parachute and therefore provides less drag. This means that a drogue parachute cannot slow an object as much as a conventional parachute, but it can be deployed at speeds at which conventional parachutes would be torn apart. Many military jet aircraft use this system to supplement the aircraft braking system. Probably the most commonly used speed retarding system in use today is the thrust reverser. Thrust reverser, also called reverse thrust, is the redirecting of an aircraft engine's thrust so that the exhaust gases are directed forward toward the nose of the plane rather than backward. Reverse thrust acts against the forward travel of the aircraft, providing deceleration. Thrust reverser systems are featured on many jet aircraft to help slow down just after touchdown, reducing wear on brakes and enabling shorter landing distances. There are three common types of thrust reversal systems used on jet engines. The target, clamshell, and cold stream systems. The target thrust reverser uses a pair of hydraulically operated bucket type doors to reverse the exhaust stream. During normal operation, these two doors form part of the regular exhaust nozzle of the engine. The two reverser buckets are hinged so when deployed they rotate into the exhaust, block the rearward flow of the exhaust gases, and redirect it toward the front of the aircraft providing a deceleration. The clamshell thrust reverser is very similar to the target system except that the clamshell interrupters are internal to the engine and are located between the combustion chamber and the exhaust nozzle. When activated, doors on the side of the engine rotate to the open position and close the normal exhaust exit, causing the thrust to be directed forward. A third type of thrust reverser is found on some high bypass turbofan engines called the cold stream thrust reverser. In the high bypass turbine, a portion of the air that is drawn in and accelerated by the engine's fan section is not directed into the combustion area, but goes around or bypasses that area. This causes the turbine to emit a large amount of air more slowly, boosting fuel economy and reducing noise. Doors in the bypass duct are used to redirect the air that is accelerated by the engine's fan section, but does not pass through the combustion chamber, so that it provides reverse thrust. During thrust reverser activation, a sleeve mounted around the perimeter of the aircraft engine nacelle moves rearward to expose vanes which act to redirect the engine fan flow. The system folds the vanes to block off the cold stream final nozzle and redirects this airflow toward the nose of the aircraft. Some propeller driven aircraft are equipped with variable pitch propellers. Reverse thrust is available by reversing the controllable pitch propellers to a negative pitch angle. This causes the rotating propeller to push the air forward, causing deceleration of the aircraft. Lift dumpers extend along much of the wing's length and are designed to dump as much lift as possible on landing. Lift dumpers are almost always deployed automatically on touchdown. Lift dumpers have three main functions. Putting most of the weight on the wheels of the aircraft for maximum braking effect, increasing drag, and preventing aircraft bounce on landing. Lift dumpers on modern jet aircraft are often the same surfaces used as spoilers in flight. With advances in aircraft design, the development of stealth technology and other innovations, flight surfaces have been developed that accomplish more than one function. Among these multitask flight surfaces are flaperons, elevons, split rudders, and stabilators.
A flapper on in an aircraft's wing is a type of control surface that combines the functions of both flaps and ailerons. Some large commercial aircraft may have a flapper on between the flaps and ailerons. In addition to controlling the roller bank of an aircraft, as do conventional ailerons, both flaperons can be lowered together to function in the same way as a set of flaps. Elevons are aircraft control surfaces that combine the functions of the elevator, which is used for pitch control, and the aileron, which is used for roll control. They are frequently used on tailless aircrafts such as flying wings or delta winged aircraft where there is no separate tail. When moved in the same direction, elevons will cause a pitching force which will bring the nose of the aircraft up or down. When moved deferentially, or one up and one down, they will cause the aircraft to roll to the left or to the right. The split rudder is another flight control surface that is often found on tailless aircraft such as the B-2 bomber. Located on the outboard end of the wing, the primary function of the split rudder is to provide yaw control or to cause the aircraft to turn left or right. By extending the split rudder on one side of the aircraft, drag is increased on that side. The aircraft turns toward the area of highest drag. By extending both split rudders, they act as air brakes, slowing the aircraft. A stabilator, more frequently called an all-moving tail or all-flying tail, is a fully movable aircraft stabilizer. It serves the usual functions of both the horizontal stabilizer and the elevator. Because of its higher efficiency at high Mach numbers, it is often found on high subsonic, transonic, or supersonic aircraft. With the advent of swept-wing aircraft, additional issues had to be addressed dealing with the changes in airflow over a swept-wing versus a straight-wing. To deal with those changes in airflow, a number of additional surfaces were developed. These surfaces included wing fences, vortex generators, and a number of different wingtip devices. Lift is generated by the airflow moving around the wing from front to rear. When a swept wing travels at high speed, the airflow has little time to react and simply flows around the wing almost straight from front to back, the same as that around a straight winged airfoil. At lower speeds, the air does have time to react and is pushed outward or spanwise by the angled leading edge, moving it toward the wingtip. At the wing root nearest the fuselage, this has little noticeable effect. Farther toward the wingtip, the air flow is pushed spanwise, not only by the leading edge, but by the spanwise air moving beside it. At the wingtip, the air flow can end up being almost all spanwise, as opposed to front and back over the wing. This could cause the effective or front to back airspeed to drop well below the stall speed of the aircraft. This could cause wing stall at the wing tips as the tips are most rearward. This motion can cause flow separation to occur on the outer wing. As the ailerons are typically located at or near the wing tips, this could cause the loss of aileron control. Wing fences are flat plates fixed to the upper surfaces of the wing, parallel to the airflow, typically wrapping around the leading edge. The purpose of a fence is to redirect the flow aft toward the trailing edge and to create a vortex or spiral airflow to increase the speed of the flow and delay flow separation. As a result, the wing is able to continue generating lift in conditions where it would have stalled and to improve airflow over the flight control surfaces. A vortex generator is an aerodynamic device consisting of a small vane or vanes usually attached to the aircraft wing. 
A vortex generator is much like a miniature wing perpendicular to the main wing. These generators are mounted at an angle of attack to the airflow over the wing so that each creates a vortex off the exposed tip. These vortices delay flow separation and aerodynamic stalling. As the airflow is directed more toward the rear of the wing, it improves the effectiveness of wings and other control surfaces, such as flaps, elevators, and ailerons. Wingtip devices are intended to improve the efficiency of swept wing aircraft. Wingtip devices increase the lift generated to the wingtip by smoothing the airflow across the upper wing near the tip and reducing the drag caused by wingtip vortices. The wingtip vortex, which rotates around from below the wing, is caused by the meeting of low pressure air flowing over the wing and higher pressure air from under the wing. Wingtip vortices create turbulence starting at the leading edge of the wingtip and moving backwards and inwards, destroying lift in the wingtip area. Although they function in different manners, the intended effect of the wingtip device is to reduce the aircraft drag by using some of the energy generated by the rotating vortex. Wingtip devices can also improve aircraft handling characteristics. Among these wingtip devices are the wing end plate or winglets, wingtip fences, canted winglets, blended winglets, and split tipped winglets. In addition to wingtip devices, changes have been made to the overall shape of the wing to enhance performance and control while increasing fuel efficiency, a major factor in reducing aircraft operating costs. Leading edge notches and a device called a dog tooth are both types of wing modifications. A notched leading edge and a dog tooth work in a similar manner as a wing fence to increase the speed of the flow over a portion of the wing and delay stall. A dog tooth or notch is usually located toward the wing tip close to the aileron. This position helps generate high speed airflow over the ailerons to increase their effectiveness and improve maneuverability. A leading edge extension is a small extension to an aircraft wing surface. Located at the wing root, forward of the leading edge, it produces a single strong vortex near the wing root. The primary reason for adding an extension is to improve the airflow at high angles of attack and low air speeds, to improve handling, and delay wing stall. Raked wingtips, where the tip of the wing has a higher degree of sweep than the rest of the wing, are featured on some Boeing commercial airplanes. By interrupting harmful wingtip vortices and decreasing drag, this addition improves fuel efficiency and climb performance and also shortens takeoff field length. Advances to aviation and flight control continue to improve the efficiency and performance of aircraft. Additional experimentation with wingtip devices could offer up to a 10% reduction in fuel use in the future. The addition of such concepts as thrust vectoring or aiming the thrust nozzle of a jet aircraft are already showing how these advances are enhancing aviation. With the improvements in the strength and heat resistance of new materials, Coupled with reductions in weight, the aircraft of the future will start to resemble the science fiction flying machines of the past.